Okay, I'm Kat Khan, and I am interviewing Darren Gendron from Artist Alley at the ALA Annual Conference 2012 in Anaheim, California. Um, Darren, you run uh, Dernworks, and you also have a webcomic? Uh, my main webcomic is Hello with Cheese, and from there we have a lot of side projects that we run alongside it, uh, including our children's book, The Monster Alphabet. Okay, I have a few questions here. First off, how did you get started in comics? Um, the initial desire to like sit down and actually write comics, I'd always wanted to be a writer. There was some uh, desire in me as a child to, be, uh, to have my tax ID, the job description, be storyteller. And I always liked different ways of writing stories, and comics were just one of those things that I rediscovered in college and realized they are uh, I had it described to me once as one of the two original American forms of uh, art. It's jazz and comics. And I really gravitated towards that in keeping comics alive and uh, really wanted to write them from there. Great. Um, have libraries affected you much in how you got into reading or how you do your oh, work? Gosh, the reading part was huge. I mean, I. As a child, I read way too much, and if uh, my parents tried to keep up with that, I mean, my mom already was a pretty ravenous reader herself, so uh, we had our weekly trips to the library to cycle through new books all the time. Uh, it just was a matter of access. There just w would not have been enough money to keep me reading as much as I wanted to read. Um, were you able to find comics in the library where you were? Uh, very my first library would have been in a very small town in Northern California that had a population of about 300 and I don't remember there being comics in that library. In other libraries since then I've always been able to find comics. Okay, um, now is there another comic by someone other than you that you would recommend to any reader? Oh gosh, um, I, I do this a lot where there are a lot of comics out there that I feel are, uh, it's particularly web comics. There's a lot of creativity there. There's a lot of new stuff being created constantly. In the past two years, I can think of four web comics that have amazing art, amazing story. Uh, one is called Yellow Peril, and it's a story about an Asian American office environment comedy slash romance. Uh, it's uh, you can find that one at ypcomic.com. Uh, there's a a couple weird westerns. Uh, one is called Plume, like a plume of smoke, and the other is The Next Town Over. Uh, plume deals with more of a mystic uh, slash western, and Next Town Over has a demonic slash steam steampunk western. And then the fourth one I, I'm just absolutely in, in love with lately is something called Little Guardians, which is a, a fantasy comic about uh, these children of protectors of ancient villages. Great. Could you tell me a little bit more about your Monster Alphabet book? The Monster Alphabet was this idea that I wanted to write a book for my son. And he was uh, born in 2010, and so the clock started ticking while my wife was pregnant, and I started working on it, and uh, I had this idea of putting in a new alphabet book together that instead of A is for Apple, it was A is for Akupara. <laughs> and the idea from there was then to go to all these different cultures and pick out these uh, different legendary monsters that uh, the idea was is every one of those monsters had to be so old that nobody could point to the original origin story who wrote it. Uh, so there was this almost uh, mystic realism to it. Like if you couldn't identify the original uh, creator to make it fiction, it almost became fact at that mm. point. Great. Now you have been doing web comics and you're working on the Monster Alphabet book. What one piece of advice would you give to someone who came up to you and said they wanted to start creating comics? Uh, do it. Uh, it it's, uh, it's a variation of uh, when people come up to authors and ask what's the best thing you can do to become a writer, write. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a little bit more effort to make comics. I mean, 
there is the drawing part of it, but if you got you got to think back to where you were in first grade and you loved to draw and it didn't matter what your drawings looked like if you can get back to that passion for your art and just work at it and practice your art will get better like there's no such thing as somebody who can't draw mm -hmm. people think they can't draw but if you get past that mental block and just do it you'll get better and finally what would you like libraries to do for comics that you haven't seen them do yet? See, that's a tough one because libraries are already doing a good job. Most librarians that I've spoke to both here and at my library and uh, across the country, they already get the concept that comics, it's not a genre, it's a uh, delivery mechanism. So that doesn't affect the age or content of the story. Um, I love the fact, and they do an excellent job of promoting comics as introductory reading um, and and sort of being gatekeepers of comics. Uh, it's That's difficult. Um, I'm really just going to give them two thumbs up right now. I'm very happy with what libraries are doing with comics.